Uh, for me, I think the budget that we have now is not significantly different uh, from the budget that we, that, we, that we are running right now. So mm. the budget for this year that is ending. I see, of course, there's a jump to 52 trillion. But when you look at how the monies have been allocated, I don't expect um, uh, so much as compared to, to, to what we have seen before. Now, the context is almost the same. We are still recovering uh, from shocks occasioned by uh, COVID-19. We are still suffering uh, from challenges in the international community. The amount of money that we are going to collect is almost, okay, it is slightly less than what we are going to spend only for, 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 for programs uh, without taking into account the issue of debt interest and, and, and others. Uh, so so it, is, it is very important to know that the budget that we are going to have, the 52 uh, trillion, is not a budget that we can finance uh, using our tax. It has always uh, been so. <laughs> there's revenue. not been any difference and with the this picture, one. And the picture is actually not getting any better. The picture is getting worse. And that points us to the debate of our debt sustainability and the strategies that as a country we must put in place uh, to ensure that we actually do not slide into a very, very serious uh, debt trap. I know there will be discussions about whether our debt is sustainable or not, but the moment, uh, the moment we hit the 50% uh, threshold that we had set for sales and, and also under our, our debt, our East African currency, common currency convergence criteria of 50%, it tells you that we are... We're almost there. We are really distressed. In rental income has not been earned by the owner of the building, the tax goes down. So you want to keep watching all those spaces to say which part of the economy that we expected to perform, how is it performing, how is it not performing, what yeah. does this mean do for we the do? budget? Mm. We have just passed the LGBTQ law. It has a lot of implications on the revenue side. Agree. And we are getting those. So it's time now to begin looking at those assumptions. We have, uh, as you have said, governance and security is about 14.5 or 14.4% 14 uh, of the budget. This is about seven trillion. We've just been hit in Somalia. The, the, the situation is still fluid in the Congo. There were conversations in Burundi on whether the East African standby force remains. Uh, part of it is a peacekeeping, but there is no peace in that place. The, the, the nature of war is what you thought was peacekeeping might turn into an offensive combat. and mm. combat operation. So th that budget will certainly is likely to go up. And as we say in economics, it's like waves, it's counter-cyclical. If one cost mm. goes up, don't increase your borrowing. And I think this is where government of Uganda made a mistake. Whenever there will be a need, we would borrow. A need, we would borrow. So you present mm. a supplementary without a source of revenue. You're planning to borrow. Yes. Now, in the past, any supplementary will be funded by cuts elsewhere. That's what we call counter-cyclical. If something is going up, another thing must go down. Because I must keep my budget balanced. Mm. So somebody thinks the 3% for supplementary must be additional to the 52.7. No, we are simply saying we are going to play within the 52.7, but we must not increase that play beyond the 3%. I, I think we need to uh, put a clause to the appetite that we have for acquiring debts in and out, but also look inward and see areas that uh, can be... <coughs> can be reviewed for the purposes of saving some money. As the appetite for debt is going up, we are not minding so much about uh, excessive expenditure, especially in these administrative expenses that have been reported about. You still see budgets for different ministries for donations uh, shooting up, and you wonder what kind of donations uh, these are for. You still see entertainment uh, costs running through our budget. You still see quite a number of, of strange things uh, that are uh, in our budgets. And for me, that's part of the, that one of the reasons, again, for that is that the nature of our budgeting, uh, if you give it a historical context, is that has been an incremental, been using an incremental method where if you're given five billion this year, you expect now to be given additional two, seven, then, you know, it keeps on building. Mm. Without reviewing the key activities, in my view, that are contributing to that increase or decrease. So you need drastic radical changes to say what is taking what is in my consumption because mm. i must save at some mm. point mm. so what is in my consumption is there something i can attack and for some people that's why you end up hearing people of one meal a day you end up people having one piece of cloth 
Some of them it is a piece, not a whole setup. You only put on the, the short or trouser tone, no shirt. These people are trying really to manage and live within their means. We are expecting Mr. Government to do that as well. Now, Mr. Government remains adamant and irresponsible to the realities mm. in most of the times. Mm. So the, the rationalization, and I, I like the terminology really, uh, public service put it as RAPEX, which is rationalization of agencies and public expenditure. Okay. You may have problems rationalizing the agencies. But the public Because they have legal issues, some of them will have interest, some of them, mm. even as we are saying, Lobby. stop, another one is created, <laughs> and okay. that is the politics there and may be a little bit complicated. But can we rationalize public expenditure? When you look at our, uh, our tax construction, you, you notice that, uh, I know people will say everybody pays tax. Of course, and indeed that is true. When you go to the market uh, to buy salt, you pay tax. But the burden uh, of paying taxes, in my view, is concentrated in a few, few people, a few sections of, of our community. Mm. And <clears throat> almost every tax measure that comes, uh, it hurts that particular community. That, in my view, undermines uh, growth of businesses and also creation of, uh, of employment opportunities. We all know that in our tax administration, again, we still have challenges. We have about 2.8 trillion that is classified as tax expenditure. This is the amount of money that we forego in terms of incentives mm. and our other support mechanisms uh, geared at uh, assisting taxpayers to grow. Uh, but we have also noted that some of these interventions are not transparent. Mm. 